Let's talk about vaporous cavitation. Now this is distinct from air cavitation. So there's sort of two different types of cavitation. One is when we collapse an air bubble within the lubricant. And the other one is when we collapse a steam bubble within the lubricant. So let's talk about how water can contribute to the causes of vaporous cavitation. So typically where you see this would be in an area where the lubricant is compressed. So where do you, are you going to find that? Well, generally it's a pump or a compressor. You'll definitely notice when cavitation is occurring because you'll have pump noise, which leads to vibration, surface damage, and ultimately failure. And this presents itself a couple of ways. Sometimes it's cavitation, sometimes it's micro dieseling, but the effects are broadly similar, right? And the sound is also broadly similar. I describe it as someone gargling marbles, right? So when you walk past a pump, you'll it'll sound like there's a whole bunch of marbles in the system. Well, you either have a cavitation problem or you have a micro dieseling problem. Now, it's, under, it's helpful to understand the differences between these because then it can help you troubleshoot, right? So, when we're looking at the system, what we're generally concerned with is the inlet to the pump. Well, now, why are we concerned with that? Okay, let's think about the boiling properties of water. So water at, you know, uh, atmospheric, uh, standard atmosphere, boils at 100 degrees Celsius, but that's not always true. If we go to really, really high altitudes where the air is thinner and there's less air pressure, then water tends to boil at much lower temperatures. We actually take advantage of this in some water removal methods, right? So this is actually really helpful for mountaineers, right? Some of the early mountaineers like Alexander von Humboldt would actually boil water at different altitudes so that they could know how high they were, at what elevation they were, right? So how does this apply to our oil system? Okay, if we have, for example, some kind of restriction, right? Uh, it could be at the breather or it could be, you know, at the, um, at the strainer, it could even be in the pipe work. What we are doing is we are lowering the system pressure. And if we lower the system pressure, then sometimes we might have significant enough temperature to cause um, the boiling of water, right? So, so this now gets into the problem with water. If we have free water somewhere in our oil system, and it encounters low pressure, then there is the potential that it could boil. And now what we have is, you know, vaporous water in our system, right? So, so we don't have free water. Now we have water vapors. Now what's going to happen as that goes through the pump? Well, as it goes through the pump, that vapor is going to be compressed rapidly, right? It's going to be compressed so fast that it doesn't really have an opportunity to, um, you know, go back into solution or anything like that. So what actually happens is we get cavitation. So as we as we exert a pressure all around this uh, bubble of water vapor, the bubble is actually going to collapse and it deforms in a very specific way. Um, and eventually what you get is basic, basically a, a supersonic jet of steam, which is likely to then impact the surface of the pump or maybe the uh, the propeller or something like that, right? And what you get is surface damage of your equipment, okay? Now, uh, this has actually been visualized in studies, right? So they've taken, I guess it was a very, very high speed uh, camera. And you can look at the pictures along here, right? Uh, I've given the credit, this is a, a 2019 paper, where you can actually see the, 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 the bubble collapsing and it causes uh, minor indentations in, in the surface. Now, over time, right? that is going to cause substantial surface damage. And you've probably seen examples of cavitated um, water propellers, right? That's, that's a very common uh, circumstance where you'll see this. So again, what's the takeaway here? Well, vaporous cavitation only happens if you have water in your oil system. So water that ingresses and sees low pressure can sometimes boil inside the oil system at temperatures well below 100 degrees Celsius. If I now have those water vapors and they go through a pump or a compressor, they get rapidly compressed and that bubble collapses and causes cavitation.